Our last video explained what Universal Windows Platform is and how its anti-piracy measures have made it an incredibly effective DRM, the strongest yet in fact. The video before that compared Denuvo to Universal Windows Platform and found UWP had resisted piracy for far longer than Denuvo. This is the follow-up to those videos, so go ahead and watch them first if you haven't already. Links are in the description and the top right corner. This video goes into detail about UWP's history, specifically its track record with piracy. If you're wondering why we call UWP a DRM, we've addressed that in our previous video, so check that out if you haven't already. Link is in the description and the top right corner. Let's start from the beginning by winding the clock back to 2016. Launching in January 2016, Rise of the Tomb Raider was the first AAA title on Microsoft Store, though by no means exclusively, as it was also released on Steam. In other words, people who bought the UWP version could only play on Windows 10, while Steam buyers could play on Windows 7 and 8 as well. The UWP version was held back by several other restrictions, as it was incompatible with software like Fraps, mouse macros and multi-GPU configurations could not make use of SLI or Crossfire. Thus, it was well advised to go for the Steam version, which shared none of these shortcomings. Sadly, this was not a choice available with the next UWP title. Gears of War Ultimate Edition was the first UWP game exclusive to Windows 10, launching on the 1st of March. The exclusivity was in stark contrast to the game it remastered, which was compatible for all operating systems from XP onwards. Three days later, a scathing op-ed was published in The Guardian by Tim Sweeney, co-founder of Epic Games, the studio that developed the original Gears of War in 2006. Sweeney lambasted Microsoft for making UWP a closed platform within a platform into Windows 10 as the first apparent step towards locking down the consumer PC ecosystem and monopolizing app distribution and commerce. The whole article is a recommended read and the link is in the description. Before the end of March, free-to-play title Killer Instinct was made exclusive on Windows 10, though it would later be brought to Steam as a full-price title one year later. The Steam build was promptly cracked by Codex, but that is not very relevant to UWP, so let's move on. The second full-price AAA title to use UWP was Quantum Break, which launched on April 5th, 2016. In a matter of days, a hacker named Dizia released a bypass that involved using PowerShell to set execution policy to unrestricted and register an app manifest XML. This method had the consequence of opening a security vulnerability, allowing all scripts, including those on remote servers, to run on your local machine. It gets worse as the bypass required logging into a Microsoft account. Compounding all of these issues was the bypass's unreliability, with many reporting the game failing to move past the loading screen, if not crashing to desktop outright. Since it failed more often than it worked, many chose to wait for a proper scene crack. In recognition, we opted not to count this as a crack in our comparison with Denuvo in the previous video. On May 5th, a free-to-play version of Forza Motorsport 6, titled Apex, entered open beta that would last four months. Again, this is not very relevant to piracy, but it is a UWP exclusive, so we included it in our timeline. Recore was the third full-price game to use UWP, launching on the 13th of September 2016, followed two weeks later by Forza Horizon 3 on the 27th of the same month. Around this time, Quantum Break was ported to Steam on September 29th and was promptly cracked by Skid Row the very next day. This alone proved UWP was a cut above Steamworks at resisting piracy, though Steam is notoriously easy to crack at this point. One to two weeks later, a bypass for Forza Horizon 3 was released by NT Authority, the coder whose previous cracks include Alta IW Net for Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer and 5M for GTA 5's multiplayer. He named his bypass for Forza Horizon 3 Immersive Host. This involved a complex procedure that required Visual Studio 2015, an inside build of Windows 10 and involved using PowerShell to modify certificates. Even after all that, the game was still unstable, leading many to keep waiting for a proper crack. Around the time of Immersive Host's release, Gears of War 4 launched on October 11th, becoming the last UWP game of 2016. In the same month, Gears of War Ultimate Edition was bypassed with Immersive Host, another procedure that required setting execution policy to unrestricted. This bypass was also unstable and unreliable. Even if it managed to avoid crashing, it would not save progress at checkpoints. 
the wait for a proper crack continued. February 2017 saw the introduction of another bypass for Forza Horizon 3, this time by Opus Dev. However, established repacker FitGirl had this to say, you need specific Windows version. You have to enable dev mode. You have to use fake Xbox account. You may have to install additional updates. Foolproof? No way. If you'd like to know more about repackers, we'll analyze what they do and the role they fill in the pirate scene in our next video. So be sure to subscribe and press the bell button to know when it's out. Either way, we agree with FitGirl's assessment of the Opus Dev bypass not being a normal crack. Around this time, Halo Wars 2 launched on 17th of February. Three months later, Phantom Dust was ported to UWP and released for free on May 16th. In September, another bypass was released that would let pirates play Gears of War 4 for 10 hours by exploiting the trial version. According to the author, the demo version only allows you to progress until Chapter 6, where this bypass lets you complete the entire game. Moving on, Forza Motorsport 7 launched on the 3rd of October, followed four weeks later by Zoo Tycoon Ultimate Animal Collection, which launched on October 31st. One week later, Super Lucky's Tail launched on November 7th, the last of 2017. The second month of 2018 saw the release of the first proper crack for Universal Windows Platform, with Codex cracking Zoo Tycoon Ultimate Animal Collection on February 14th, 106 days since the game launched. In their release notes, Codex indicated that the game had no less than five different layers of DRM. MS Store, UWP, EAPX, XB Live, and Arxan. Six days after this, Age of Empires Definitive Edition launched on February 20th and was cracked by Codex on the 23rd. Codex had cracked the game in just three days. Their release notes for Age of Empires noted only Microsoft and Arxan as the game's DRMs a trend that continued with their subsequent UWP cracks. This raises the question, was Zoo Tycoon an anomaly in the amount of DRMs it used? Or did Codex change how they denoted DRM, lumping all the other DRMs into one when they list Microsoft as a DRM? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Moving on, Codex cracked Super Lucky's tail on March 4th, 117 days since the game launched. Eight days later, they cracked Gears of War 4 on March 12th, 517 days since the game's release. State of Decay 2 launched on May 22nd and was cracked 18 days later by Codex on June 9th. Three days after that, Codex cracked Forza Horizon 3 on June 12th, 623 days since it hit the market. Less than 24 hours later, an independent hacker going by MNSXX used Codex's emulator on Forza Motorsport 7 and tweaked it to unlock all DLCs. However, this crack was unstable and prone to crashes. Two days later, an independent hacker going by Mercs213 used Codex's emulator on Gears of War Ultimate Edition, though this stopgap could not save progress at checkpoints. Nevertheless, this could be worked around by renaming the chapter folders in the game files. As this isn't a perfect solution, we still classify this bypass as an improper crack. On June 20th, Mercs 213 used the same technique to crack Halo Wars 2, 488 days since the game's launch. Halo Wars 2 was the first UWP title to use Denuvo and it doesn't seem to have hindered Mercs in any way. That being said, his bypass did have issues with saving progress, but this was also the case with his other bypass of Gears of War. Denuvo seems to have had little effect protecting UWP. On June 24th, Codex released a crack fix for Forza Horizon 3 which solved an incompatibility with some builds of Windows 10. Codex appears to have disapproved of others taking liberties with their emulators as they protected this release with custom hash encryption. The irony was not lost on pirates as they noted that this crack had DRM of its own. Now that the emulators were secure, Codex released a proper crack for Forza Motorsport 7 on June 28, 268 days since the game's launch. Moving on, the only UWP crack released in July was for an update for State of Decay 2. On August 15th, Codex released their final Universal Windows crack as of this video for ReCore Definitive Edition, 701 days since the game's launch. The next month saw several Hither to UWP exclusives debut on Steam, which meant they could now be played on Windows 7 and 8. This was thanks to THQ Nordic acquiring the rights to distribute games previously published by Microsoft. These games are Record Definitive Edition, Super Lucky's Tale, Disneyland Adventures, 
Rush, a Disney Pixar adventure, and Zoo Tycoon Ultimate Animal Collection. As of this video, no scene group has bothered to crack the Steam builds of ReCore, Super Lucky's Tale, or Zoo Tycoon Ultimate Animal Collection. The notable outlier is Rush, a Disney Pixar adventure, which was cracked only after it was ported to Steam, 318 days since the game's launch on Windows 10 platforms. Fast forward to October 2nd, Forza Horizon 4 is the latest Universal Windows game at this time and is still uncracked as of this video. How long it will stay that way remains to be seen. That wraps up our analysis of the Universal Windows platform's history. Did you find this video interesting? Please share it to spread the word. Our next video will explore the differences between the wares seen, peer-to-peer -peer groups and repackers. So please like, subscribe and press the bell button to know when it's out. Do you play Rainbow Six Siege or Dota 2? Check out the other channel for analytical guides for both games. Link is in the description and on the screen. While you're here, feel free to watch the history of loot boxes, the founders fast, how Nvidia is delegitimizing their MSRP, and our four-part de nouveau analysis where we explore its history, its performance impact, and why developers stick with it even after it's cracked.